The economic freedom fighters turned 10 years old yesterday. It is now South Africa's third biggest opposition party. For more on this, we speak to SABC News political editor Mzwandi Lembeche. Mzwandi, good morning and thank you so much for making time for us. Thank you. Do you, can you recall 2013 and 20, 2012 moving into 20, 2013? Very vividly, very vividly. It feels like yesterday when those events uh, outside Lutuli House, and I remember when the final decision was to be taken, when the current president who was chairing that NDC, remember, which needed to then pronounce finally mm. uh, on Malema. So the kind of anxiety uh, that people had, uh, what was going to happen? Because remember, uh, Julius Malema, together with, the, with his collective, they had already made a huge impact politically in the Youth League. That's why it was very significant and everyone was watching and yeah. learning what was going to happen. And, and, and Julius would always speak now, at least, of he remembers those days yeah. and when pundits and political analysts would say that it's cold outside of the ANC, yeah. the party wouldn't survive. They made references to the likes of the UDM and the IFP. But the interesting thing about um, the EFF is yeah. that at the first time that they contested the elections in 2014, mm -hmm. they came in as the third political uh, party yeah. and have maintained that position over the election cycles. You know what was different with the EFF? Um, that was <laughs> the Youth League of the ANC, which already had a very clearly defined program. So they knew what they wanted to do. And in fact, some of their um, difficulties with the governing party or the mother party was some of the, of the things they were articulating. So perhaps they were articulating them in a manner in which the mother board was very, very uncomfortable with. So when they got expelled or when they left some of them, so it was very easier for them, so easy for them. So they didn't have to sit down and start afresh. What were we, what were we going to do? They said, listen, uh, we were on a mission. We wanted to revive the ANC. These were the resolutions. We still believe in them. Because we're outside there now, so we've been chucked out. Of course, we've tried to beg to get in, so we've been denied. So let's take this and then run with it. And then they did a few consultations um, around the country, what was happening. And then the overwhelming view was that they actually had a, 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 a path yeah. to move forward. Then there is what they brought to Parliament. <laughs> um, the theatrics of it, um, the also knowing how to grab the eyeballs. Julius Malema is very good at that, I think. Um, also considering the number of followers that he has on, on social media. Um, the Zuma must, the Zuma, Zuma must pay back. The payback yeah. campaign pay back was, was quite a massive one. Speak yeah. to us about that moment and also considering at the time how the political party yeah. would go to court and uh, almost all of their court cases they would win, including, for instance, remember even the one around the dress code? Yeah, um, yeah, that was a matter that went to court. There was a I, matter around the medical aid as well. I think, uh, I think what, what the EFF did quite well, they used the fact that they were young, so they had a lot of ideas. And then they felt, you know what, in order to be felt, we needed to shake the existence. So, and how do you do that? Just do the unconventional way of doing things. Uh, because everyone will take note. In fact, I was, as I was walking here, I was speaking to some of uh, our colleagues. So we're speaking about EFF. We're saying, you know, the manner in which EFF does things. How do you, I mean, can you expect any other party deciding all its 450 public representatives will not attend their birthday celebration because they did not comply with uh, providing mm. the buses or the transport. So it's the, it's, it's, it's the kind of the unconventional way of doing things that has kept that attention going forward. So they basically keep you thinking, uh, what is their next move? So exactly what you are speaking about. So the payback, the money, they said, here was the issue. But if you look at it and then we make it a big deal, so this thing will gain traction. Did yeah. not? And then, of course, they came with overalls. And then you start to say, why overalls? They tell you, said, no, but everyone who works, um, this is how they work. So their unconventional way of approaching issues and doing things is what has kept them so relevant. Yeah. Then, of course, the other accusation that the party consistently f uh, faces is the one of being a flip-flopper. That uh, the EFF would pronounce on this and have this particular stance and next week things change. I think even, <laughs> is it Malachi from the, from the ANC Youth League, the new yeah. ANC uh, Youth League president, said that you can't even trust the EFF to go into an agreement with them because one thing they agree now and then the next thing they've changed their minds. 
I think uh, perhaps in their defense in that area, so they would tell you, uh, perhaps, which I think it's also to their credit, they will tell you that, listen, when we were formed, we were very, very young. So in the process, we've been learning quite a lot. So there are things we think we should have done differently, but there are others which we, we, we believe we still need to continue doing, or there are things that we've achieved. So there's no need to keep on hanging on them. So I think that's what they basically are saying. So what would be interesting, now they are no longer a, a new party. Yeah. So they are now an established party. So the question is, will they be able to sustain? For example, for me, I'm very interested to see their performance in 2024 because now they've stabilized, they've settled, and people know who they are. So if they keep growing, so then it means uh, South Africans will be liking that. But if they start stagnating, so it means they'll have to change direction. Yeah. Okay, and we're also asking you this morning, what do you make of uh, the... Um, EFF celebrating its 10th anniversary. What do you make of their contribution to South Africa's political landscape? And let's see some of your responses at the agenda underscore SABC. Okay, this one from JCK Kaunda says, um, the EFF has made their presence felt in Parliament, um, keeping the ANC on their toes. The EFF has one weak point of uh, prioritizing undocumented immigrants above uh, South African unemployed youth and that will haunt them for decades to come. As it, uh, who says that the EFF is notorious for anarchy, their meaning of revolution is to destroy instead of adding any value. They are bullies of their highest note with no regards for the rule of law. Or the rule of law, our constitutional democracy is firmly based on hence their banning of media houses and journalists. And Pap is saying that morning all, the EFF certainly made its mark in the political sphere in SA. I think many people want to see it succeed even more. If only they can change one policy within their constitution, which is concerning open borders. And this is a big one. This is a big one. Because even amongst the so-called fighters themselves, yes. this is a point that some of them disagree with the party on. I think um, if you look at uh, and if you engage with the leadership of the EFF, I know they have taken uh, this uh, position, but uh, it does appear it is what is stagnating their growth. Given the circumstances and the conditions in the country, right now um, there is a number of um, undocumented, undocumented migrants in the country. So then given the issue of crime, it's not only them, by the way, who are committing crime, yep. but in the event someone who is um, undocumented commits a crime, it's very difficult uh, to, to get hold of that person because it's not documented anywhere. So those kinds of things uh, have been really the bugbear for the EFF. I think, uh, Aldrin, uh, the leadership of the EFF has got it. The last press conference in Soweto by uh, Julius Malema, where he was speaking to the media, in fact, about, about this, one of the things uh, he said, um, you know, he can put things very forcefully. He said, those Zimbabweans loitering in South Africa must go back and vote. Yes, he was not saying they needed to go back forever, but the, 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 how he chose to use the kind of language, mm -hmm. it does tell you it is also bothering them as well. Yes, they believe in this um, Africa for all, but the fact of the matter is that as it stands now, we are countries we, which are sovereign, and then it's very, very difficult to convince some of the people who otherwise would readily vote for EFF, but they just feel maybe this will, uh, will, will deal with us. I don't know how they will navigate that going through, but I think Jolas Malem has made it clear that if it means losing the vote because uh, he's asked to hate yeah. the, foreigners, the foreigners, so be it.